Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 127. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome. If you're new here, say hi down below. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2 And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Welcome to a brand new week. Yeah, I'm feeling great. Are yes. you feeling good? Yep, I'm feeling really good. And it's funny, we went from three weeks of being sick and barely being able to do anything yeah. to diving into this has been a hectic week. It has. We have had so much work to do. It's been yes. like crazy. Well, first of all, so we were sick. We did we did keto on the couch. That got off without a hitch, no issues. Thank you again, everybody, for all of your well wishes. Then we discovered we had a leak in our pool where we were losing an inch of water a day. Which is significant. Which is a lot of water. And like I started calling around to some like leak detection companies and they were like, yeah, it's about twelve to fifteen hundred dollars to come out and find the leak. So I'm like going, okay, so where could the leak be? The leak could be in the light. And it could be in like the drain that goes out, you know, the skimmer. It could be in where the water comes back in. So you decided to play Where's Waldo yeah. with the well, leak. Yeah, my biggest fear was that the leak was in the piping system. Yeah. Because that meant digging up our entire yard. And I really didn't want to do that. Because you got to figure, like, I'd be like, okay, now you're going to have to hire a leak detection company because they can tell you exactly where it is. Or we could just dig up the entire yard and find it. So I decided that here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna let the water keep draining until it gets like to the lowest point where it stops going. Only it got below the skimmer and it got below the light. That's when you start to get scared. And it started going, it kept going. So I looked at Rachel and I'm like, um, okay, so that means there's only two places. The main drain, which I know is completely disconnected on our pool, or B, there's a crack in the pool somewhere. So Anthony and I dove down, we checked around the main drain and sure enough, like where the drain seats in the pool itself, even though there's no pipe that it's connected to, it was leaking. So Anthony and I spent like three hours repairing that, but we did save $1,500. I was gonna say that was a super blessing. And you know, anything that you have comes with some complications. Yeah. You know, a lot of people are like, gosh, I wish I had a pool. Right. Well, you got like, you know, more stuff, more problems. Right. Yeah, well, the thing is, is that it wasn't, it was $1,500 to find the leak plus fixing the leak. Yeah. And our whole thing was the pool needs to be like resurfaced at like during it's the winter. It's an older pool. And I was like, do I really want to pay money to fix a leak now and then resurface it later, which is only about double the cost of fixing the leak. And they can fix the leak when you actually resurface it. So we were trying to basically give ourselves six months. I'm proud of you for trying. Yeah. Sometimes just trying, putting the effort in, just see what you can do. I mean, I don't think you were reckless no. in doing it, but but we did do a quick turnaround because when you anytime you drain a pool in Florida, you risk it just popping out of the ground. Pool, pool popping. Yeah. It's a thing. So we, yeah. Not fun. At first, Anthony was like, hey, let's go ahead and drain the entire pool and clean it. And again, I started thinking like money now when six months we're going to like, it's going to be a brand new pool again. But yeah, Florida has something called pool popping or it, it's actually everywhere. But, and that is you empty all the water out and then the water table below, because like, you know, we're at sea level could actually make Push the entire up. pool go pop out of the ground, at which point uh, you're screwed. That's scary. <laughs> it's just a matter of the pool's now destroyed. So Thank God we, were we, didn't, we didn't do that. Able to avoid that. Speaking of trying something new, we've decided we're gonna attempt to have grass with chickens in the backyard. We are because, they, I mean, they're diggers, yeah. right? They really are. So, and they wanna eat grass. So we, we re-sodded one half of the backyard yeah. And man, sodding is the dirtiest job there is. It's it like is. mulching is pretty bad also, especially if you use colored mulch. No, like the nothing red is mulch. worse than sod. But sod is just everywhere. Yeah. Like the dirt was just from head to toe. 
And as soon as I'm you done, throw out my clothes. I did because <laughs> like as soon as I'm done mopping the floor, here comes like what is that character from Charlie Brown that's just Pig a, pen? a dust ball? Well, I that's me on a regular basis. Three though. of those guys. <laughs> Like walking through the house. Yeah, so yeah, we had to jump right back into getting a bunch of work done and then making videos because we're headed to Omaha. I can't wait. At by the way, our flight is at five thirty AM. Which means we need to I leave it like three thirty AM. I'm better at that. Usually, you know, we're probably gonna have to do an Uber. I don't know how No, know, Anthony's which... driving us. He is. Anthony's driving He's us. Gonna stay up late for mom and dad. I appreciate I, that. I appreciate that. Because that's driving us. He's probably like, you know, the next time that you book something, can I be the booker? Right. Since I'm the driver. My happy medium. Let us know down in the comment section. What is your like when you travel? What time do you like to travel? I like early. My happy medium is getting on a flight that leaves somewhere around 7.30 a.m. And the reason why is 7.30 is before a lot of the business travelers sometimes yeah. will get there. And you don't have to deal with not even the business travelers, but the traffic to the airport. We're yeah. about 30 minutes from the airport. So if you go on those 9.30 flights, now you're dealing with all of the Florida traffic to get to the airport. So right. 7.30... You want to get there at about 6, 6 o'clock, 6.30. So there's really no traffic going to the airport. You get there at 7.30, and whether it's a two-hour flight or a five-hour flight, you've got your whole day ahead of yeah. you when you land. Well, and right? I don't sleep the night before I travel. Me neither. What about you guys? Do you sleep well the night before you're going to go on a trip? I'm up anyway. Yeah. It's like we might as well go do something yep. because I I can't settle my brain because I'm worried I'm going to miss the alarms and we'll set like four alarms because right. I'm afraid that I'm going to miss it. But usually I'm up before my alarm because I'm I'm, I'm just afraid we're not going to get to the airport in time. What about coming home? What is your favorite travel Same time? Same thing. Home? If it's if it's traveling home, I want to like let's it's it's go home day, get up and go. Whereas you kind of like to. To be like, hey, maybe there's some more stuff to see and do. Well, it depends. Later, for me. It, it's the same thing for me. And even going out, it's the same thing. Like, if I can't have that 7:30 in the morning flight, I want like a really late flight because I don't want to lose my day. Yeah. But it's the same thing. Coming home for me, like coming home from Omaha, we're leaving at seven in the morning. Right. Which is fine because like we're going to be hanging out with Chris and Miriam, and that's when they're leaving as well. Mm -hmm. But if I can't come home at that seven o'clock in the morning. It's the same, like, I want the latest flight possible so that we have our day. Yeah. I, for me, nothing is worse is when you're landing at, like, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, or you're leaving at 2 o'clock. You can't do anything before because you got to leave, get up, and right. get to the airport and wait at the airport. And then you can't do anything after because your day is shot before and after. So, me, it's either first in the morning or late at night. So, let us know down in the comment section what your favorite time for traveling is. Yeah. Speaking of going to Omaha, a little housekeeping. So... Uh, I was thinking about it while we were taking a shower. Well, I was taking a shower. You we weren't, weren't taking a shower. Together. <laughs> no. But um, live stream yes. Thursday. We will be in Omaha, and it's right around the time of like the VIP dinner and stuff. Oh, okay. So we're gonna try to live stream this week. So just make sure you're subscribed to the channel and make sure. Not only do you hit the bell button on the YouTube app, but a lot of people message us like, hey, I've hit the bell button, which does double check it, uh, but my phone still doesn't notify. You gotta go on your phone and allow notifications from YouTube. Right. So if you hit the bell button, that tells YouTube to notify you, but you also have to tell your phone that you want that notification. And a lot of people are probably like me, when you install an app, one of the first questions is like, are you willing to accept notifications? Right. And a lot of times you'll say not no. I'm always no, because I don't want my like home screen filled with all of these notifications. Yeah. So you have to go and make sure that your phone actually is allowing notifications from YouTube. So we're gonna try, it will probably be a little bit shorter of a live stream just because we're not gonna have like everything that we would normally do a live stream. And also we want to enjoy the moment since we are flying to Omaha to meet people and hang out yeah, with people. Yeah, meet people in person. Out. I'm excited about that, but we will be vlogging mm -hmm. so that you can see what we see in Omaha. Yeah, so, uh, and food wise, I'm, I'm saving up everything right now because <laughs> I'm excited where my weight is. I'm down below 200, I feel good. It's football season, which started yesterday for us. So a, a whole year 
since you've been doing that, like, do you feel good? Like, are, are you sore at all? Well, coming off of being sick for a couple of weeks, I'm definitely like a little sore muscle wise. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, we laid in bed for two and a half weeks. Yeah, so like, like my muscles, my muscles need a little bit of recuperation, but I'm finally feeling like I can get back onto the rower. So that'll help. Yeah. But well, it wasn't just a year for football. Cause yes, last year we had high school football and even the games were, kind of far and few between a lot of games got canceled but there was no youth league football right and it's one thing to do a friday night game where you know the game starts at seven and you're done by 9 30 10 o'clock in the cool of the evening there's another thing when you have to do four two hour youth league games on astroturf at one o'clock in the afternoon was your body in like, south florida what you trying to do old man it, it it was a little bit of a heat thing fortunately we had an overcast because we have those storms down south yeah. of us but yeah it's that just means though i've got to be in good peak performance making sure i'm taking all my electrolytes because yeah i was drinking my redmond and normally you know you do feel like like hey i got my salt in there like in the relight and you can you can usually taste the saltiness of relight it was like drinking sugar right which means i was really it. low on those electrolytes is it encouraging because you have you know younger people on your crew yep that like does that is that a real non-scale victory that you can keep up with them and even run faster than them it's it's it really hits me like yesterday we had one game that was just completely lopsided and we had a kid intercept the ball on the 10 yard line. So if you're not a football fan, I know you're not gonna know what we're talking about. Yeah, I'm like, but, nerd, nerd, nerd. So we had, a, we had an interception at the 10 yard line going in, mm -hmm. which means, okay, so since you don't know football. Yes, explain it to me. Okay, so this is your goal. Okay. And I'm that goal. All right. Okay, your, your team is trying to score on that goal. All right. And I'm defending that goal. Okay. Okay. So you've got the ball and you're trying to score. Going in means you're going that way, which means you're trying to score, right? Yeah. So if you were saying going out, it means you're going that way. Okay. Okay. So going in, they were only 10 yards away from getting, you were only 10 yards away from getting Very a score. Very close. Right? That sounds like me. My team okay. intercepted the ball. Okay. Ooh. Now I'm the referee. So the referee is standing back here. So when the guy intercepted the ball in the end zone, he ran from here. All the way across the field. All the way down there. And you gotta go with him? And I gotta go with him because I'm the furthest back. So wow. that's now my call. And it was for me an 80 yard run. Wow. And I beat him to the end line. Oh my God. By the way, 13 year old kid. So I, wow. will, I will take that that's because a, non -skill a 50 sure. year old, should not beat a 13 year old on an 80 yard dash. Thanks, Keto. So yeah, and, well, think about not only is it a 50 year old beating a 13 year old, it's a 50 year old who spent 30 years on arthritis medication. Yeah. With pins in the ankles. We're so, living this life, so baby. It did hurt a little bit the next morning. Right. But. I have a feeling that 13 year old was 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 feeling yeah. a little sore And I really wasn't even winded. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited that football season is coming. Uh, one other thing with football season, obviously you have Friday night lights. So most of our high school football games were on Fridays, but we live in Broward County. Broward County has a, a lot of high school football and occasionally there are Thursday night games. Ooh. So there is a chance just so everybody has a head up that during our football season, which runs to the end of October, there may be one or two weeks where either A, we let Rachel try to figure out how to live stream on her own on a Thursday That's night. That's scary. Or B, we move the live stream to another day. So just once again, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you're notified when we do have to move that. And we'll always let you know on Keto on the Couch beforehand. I say move it because I don't think anybody wants to spend an hour with me going, humana, humana, humana. Why? Which button do I push? Why? They, they'll enjoy just having you hanging out. Like, like, like crazy lady. Let us know down in the comment section. Would you be okay with Rachel trying the to Rachel figure out takeover. how to do a live stream Can on you imagine? her own? You want to get into comments? And yeah, stuff? let's do it. Let's go ahead and take a quick commercial break and then we'll come back with comments. Your butt looks fantastic in those pants today.
Well, thank you. Well, you and everybody. Oh. Just want to, and just in case nobody's told you yet today. I thought you were talking to me. Amazing. That's kind of disappointing now. <laughs> For everybody. Okay. Let's get into our comment section. This, this is a time where we like to take heat on the couch and we make it all about you. So if you're new to our channel, we love to celebrate you guys. That's why we started Keto on the Couch. So we have a lot of different areas here. And this this one, there were a lot of good comments this week. Very so inspirational. Bear with us. I think you're really going to enjoy these. Make sure you stick all the way to the end because there's some really good comments and questions this week in Keto on the Couch. We're going to start off with our Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week. Nailed it, babe. And uh, this is somebody who put up a post that we found very inspirational in our Facebook group. And this week's is from Laylee. Hey, Laylee. And she said, a friend of mine posted this cartoon and I absolutely love it. It's taken me a long time to learn to love myself and give myself grace, as Rachel would say. That's so good. We all need to remember that we are our own best advocate when it comes to our health and happiness. We're more invested in it than anyone else. Very true. Forgive yourself for the minor slip up. Love your body and all its rolls and stretch marks. Yep. Use them as motivation. You've been through a lot, but you are learning and evolving every day and healing decades worth of damage. That is so true. And take a look at this. So it said, you leave me alone. I'm doing the best I can. And then he's like staring in the mirror like, you hear me. Sometimes you have to stand up for yourself to yourself. That Atticus. is so true. It's, I don't know why we have such a hang up on being our biggest cheerleader, but yeah. we need to be our biggest cheerleader. We do. I mean, we try to encourage one another as spouses and mm -hmm. we're on the same, you know, keto journey together. Yes. But there's some days where, you know, Joe will say something. He's not trying to be undermining or he's not trying to discourage me. But, but he may not have the thing to say, you know, to, to make me feel great. You mean so, like your butt looks good. Right, exactly. Okay. So I need to say it. I need to be responsible. A lot of times people get discouraged because they don't have a spouse that's doing it with them. Mm -hmm. But when you have a spouse doing it with you, it's not perfect. Right. I mean, there is no perfection. Right. So you need to be your biggest advocate and yeah, give yourself some grace. That is awesome. What a cute cartoon. For the record. Your butt looks good. Well, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> I appreciate that. Okay, well, I have a surprise for you because we actually have a second Keto College Adjunct awesome. Professor of the Week, and it is James. Okay, hey, and James. Very, very simple. Said, fell off the wagon, get back on. Yes. And he has a little quote from Nisha. It said, you will not heal by going back to what broke you. Wow, that is so smart. Yes. yes. Can you imagine... Because I, I think about this like westward ho travel spirit. Because mm -hmm. I mean, you really feel like you're, you know, a pioneer eating this way. Right. Probably, especially for your family. Right. Maybe your co workers. You're a pioneer. Right. So you imagine like the Oregon Trail and like people going across the country. If you fell off the wagon because the trail got bumpy, are you like, well, here's here's where I stay? Right. No, I'm of course not. Now. You run after that, you know, wagon and you get back on. Yeah. So if you've fallen off the wagon this week, don't just say, well, I guess this is where I'm supposed to live here. No, you know? get right back on. Get back on. Yeah. Yeah. You're not at your destination yet. So we have actually this week two success stories. Now, again, if you're new to our channel, we have a Facebook family group. There's a link for it down below. If you're not a member of it, I don't understand why, why it's not? completely free. So go ahead and join it. Now, I do know that some people don't want to be part of Facebook and stuff, and we understand that. But we still are asking you for your story because your story is going to impact somebody when we read it right now. Yeah. And so if you don't have Facebook, if you don't want Facebook, you can send us your story at stories at twocrazyketos.com. But we ask you to share your story because your story is going to impact somebody. There is somebody out there right now that thinks they're alone. They think that nobody knows what it's like to go go through them. They think that they're the only person that's ever had diabetes and is trying to get off of diabetes medication. Yeah. They think they're the only person who's gotten on the scale and they went up four pounds after they fasted for five days. Right. And when you put your story out there, whether you're day one, week one, month one, or year one, 
it's going to inspire them. So we ask you, please share your story. And the first one we have this week is from Marie. Hey, Marie. Marie said, thank you for letting me join the group. I lost 100 pounds wow. on keto in 2020 from 252 pounds down to 152 Fantastic. pounds. I'm on maintenance now and living the keto way of eating. I love watching Two Crazy Keto videos. Take a look at this. Oh, Marie, hot mama. I love those boots. I had those to are like so sassy. do a double take because I didn't think it was her. Yeah, no. Right? Because you look like a relative of yourself. Every once in a while, it really annoys me when you see some of these Facebook groups, which is why we are so protective of our Facebook group. Right where people start putting up fake accounts yeah. and like basically trying to sell you a keto program. You are never going to see us trying to sell you a keto program. No. And if you ever get in our Facebook group and see somebody putting like, hey, I lost 100 pounds following this program, please Let notify us, us or one of our moderators because you will never find us endorsing anything like that. And I was just in one over on another Facebook group and the moderators didn't see it. And when somebody put up like a picture of them, supposedly, and then them a hundred pounds later saying, I follow this. It wasn't even a real account. If you clicked backwards on the person's account, it was the only post they've ever made. Right. So I had to like do a double take when I looked at that picture of her. I'm like, is that even the right person? Like it did, because she looks so different. It is the right person, but yeah. it, I had to really focus for a while. Yeah, no, that is amazing. Congratulations on that. Yeah, I mean, it was funny because I think about that sometimes too. I mean, you'll see even magazines. Right, that it they just, cut the heads off. It's so obviously, so we were just watching Beverly Hills Cop, like, you know, I mean, we've had a movie marathon for the last month. Right. And uh, there's one scene where like Eddie Murphy, his stunt double is just so visible right. that you're just, you're like, wow, they didn't even try right. to, to hide that face. You right. know, like it was, it was the stunt double. So. I remember the worst I've yeah. ever seen. I saw one where somebody had a big tattoo here and then in the other picture and it was the after picture. Right. They didn't have a tattoo. So wait a second. So they lost 150 pounds and, and had the tattoo removed. That's yeah. amazing. Okay. Thank you very much for that one. That's funny. Speaking of movies, before we move on to the next subscriber of the week, we found an amazing movie last night when and it's not gonna be now we found out it's an entire series but i'm curious if anybody else has seen because i'd never heard i may have heard the name but never saw it and i'm it kind of shocked me because i love any kind of president movie yeah. like air force one right. to the american president i love them all and it was Olympus Has Fallen. So we went out because- We stayed up till two in the morning watching it. So Olympus Has Fallen and then- um, The next one is London Has Fallen. London Has Fallen. And then there's a third one. Yeah, and then three more on the way. And in typical Netflix fashion, they've got one and three, but not two. Yeah, so you gotta so, go buy two if so you wanna watch the series. So Joe was like, well, we're spending 15 bucks on two because right. one was really good. And again, I'm sure that this is no news to somebody. They're like, where you been? Underneath the rock, but right. like, very good. Let us know down in the comments section if you've seen Olympus Has Fallen. Any type of like suspense thriller that has Morgan Freeman in it, mm -hmm. I, I'm all there. All there. I'm just, I mean, he's really, really good in, in those roles. Yeah. And, and he's in that movie well, franchise too. We have another subscriber of the week. Okay. Okay. And this one is Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Said, I got my new license. This is a four year difference. Wow. I, like, I cannot believe it. I look at myself and I know I have changed, but you just never realize how much. So true. When I got my last license, the one that's in color, I had been keto maybe four months. I may not be where I want to be, but I'm never going back to the other girl. Oh my gracious, yeah. Right, look again, doesn't even look like the same person. Looks 10 years younger. Oh my gosh, your skin, everything looks fantastic. Yeah. That is so awesome. Yeah, I mean, definitely take your driver's license and look at it, put it in the mirror now. If you haven't, if you've been on keto for a couple of months now and you've got an old driver's license picture, that's a great test. I also enjoy seeing Facebook memories come up. Yeah. Because there'll be times where we've been at a fun park or something like that or gone camping in the past with the kids and it'll be like seven years ago and I don't even look like the same person. Right. And it's amazing. It's very, very encouraging to see. I think that's the, the thing that I enjoy most even about doing YouTube is 
we are horrible with photos. Yeah, we right? are. We're really horrible, especially like us together. Usually I was always the one taking one a picture. One of us is taking the picture. And a lot of times it was me because I never wanted to be in a picture because yeah. I was huge, right? So I never wanted to be in the picture. So at least with YouTube, I feel like we're documenting, like we, we'll be able to look back in 10, 15, 20 years and yeah. be like, oh, well look at, I look was, at the I stupidity existed. that you guys were doing. I but existed. We existed. So. Um, uh, let's get into this week's comments. We're going to start off with the YouTube comments. The first one is from Christina. Hey, Christina. She says, we used to have a pastor whose famous saying was, dead men don't eat donuts. I love that. I love that too. I mean, of course, dead men don't really they eat, don't eat anything, anything. But like, yeah. So I don't want to, I don't want to be a dead man. Yeah. So like, I guess I'm just not going to eat the donuts. Well, you know, it, it's hard when you get on keto and you like look at these things and, and you're like, like, oh, should I, is it worth it? But when you start thinking about like all of the health benefits and how you feel so much better, it, it gets easier and easier to kind of be like, yeah. I don't need that. Like, I don't need that. Like, I don't need to feel the way I used to feel. It goes back to like James's post, right? Like if you fall off the wagon, get back you know, on. get back on it because like not getting on it is not going to help. When you think about like, what got you there? Well, don't do the same thing that got you there. Well, there's a lot of times when, you know, over the years where I've been tempted by something, instead of saying like, I want this versus I don't want this, I look at that and, it, and I think to myself, that's a headache. Yeah. That is anxiety. That's good. That is inflammation. That right. That's, I mean, that's a problem right there. Like, do I want joint pain? Right. Or do I want this? And so when I put it in terms of health and not even like, I'll take the hit on a, being a pound up or a pound, you know, right. down. Right. Then, then it's better. It's easier for me to walk away from that because it's like, I mean, we even did that with the um, chicken wings that we used to get at Winn Dixie mm -hmm. because we literally would look at it and be like, yes, this is a fast meal, but the inflammatory oil that they're cooking in always makes us feel lousy right. the next day. So we're going to scrutinize that ingredient and say like, okay, no, maybe we're going to spend a little bit more money and buy the wings from someplace else or right. make them ourselves but it's just it's just not worth it from the health aspect right. of it it's not a case of like i can take the hit on the scale yeah uh next comment is from tammy hey tammy tammy said here's my opinion because we asked last Aww. week like about like content like what kind of content do you want she said you guys are such an inspiration i think you could surprise us with a recipe when you come across one do a challenge when and if you are doing one and let us know if something is working for you. But you should not feel pressured to plan wow. for others. I enjoy when you share your knowledge about macros, workouts, ketones. Just be you, banter with each other and your trips. Tammy, thank you so much. What a nice thing to say. Thank you for your encouragement. That means a lot. And you know, it's just like anything, you're always worried like, am I doing enough? I mm -hmm. mean, we, we think about that. We've always kind of struggled with that even in ministry. Right. That it's like when you, you know, if, if when am we, I making an impact? Am I making an impact and am I doing enough? Have I called enough people? Have I reached out to enough people? Have I helped enough people? You know, when, you know, when I'm doing shipping for my brother, there's so many packages that need to go out and when you're done, you're done. Right. But it's different when you know you're trying to reach out to people and and so thank you that really like took a, a burden off my shoulders just yeah. now i appreciate well, that we even had that with our trip to omaha right yeah we were sick for three weeks and we were honestly going back and forth like should we even go like right. you know yes like we can go and, and like but we hadn't bought our ticket for the airline yet and I, we were going oh is, is it really worth it it's like a day and a half event. And then we started thinking back to KetoCon two years ago or more than two yeah. years ago. And like, you know what? If we could meet one person and we could change their lives or maybe it help their them. spouse to get on the path with them so that they're going to be able to live longer, it would be worth it. Right. Yeah. And so we appreciate that because yeah there are a lot of times where we sit around and be like is this worth it yeah. like are we making a difference or you just you know you can kind of cripple yourself when you're like i'm not doing enough i'm not doing enough and right. and sometimes you can just you know spin your wheels being just exhausted by that thought yep. uh next comment is from luke hey, luke. luke said partially due to my 100 travel for work status challenges don't work for me okay 
As, uh, as you might presume, anything related to fast food or easy prep for travel food scores high on my want to see list. That's awesome. That's yeah. really good to know. And yeah, that's definitely something that we can do more of as we're getting into like our camping season. Yep. You know, we're trying to, you know, you try to prep things that'll be quick. Yep. And also as we travel more, definitely, you know, what is, what are grab yeah, and go things? I, I would love to be able to get more into, let us know down in the comment section if you'd be interested into things to look for in not so much fast food. Like I'm not talking about Wendy's or McDonald's, but what I like to call like the semi fast food, right? You know, casual dining ca places where, you know, like a Culver's or something like that, where it's designed, you can go in, sit you're going to maybe sit down, but you can get it to go. But it's not like food that was already cooked. Like they have to cook it to order. Even like the five guys kind of thing where they cook it to order and what kind of like foods that you can get in some of those. So let us know down in the comment section if you would be interested in that. And also let us know what restaurants, because that's a big thing. Like one of my favorite videos like Keto Connect ever did was like what you could get at Starbucks when we right. used to be big into Starbucks, right? Mm -hmm. Knowing what can I do when I go in there? What can I look for? Well, and I think it's important because this is, I mean, maybe this isn't something everybody struggled with, but definitely something that I struggled with. And I knew my mom did the same thing. And that is when it is time to eat, you've saved all this time when you go to a casual dining or a fast food or you've grabbed and, you know, gotten something. The money, the, the not the money, but the time that you have saved by purchasing this, this item, sit down and enjoy it. That's right. I was always guilty of eating things in the car or eating things in the kitchen standing up. Right. Like they're going to take it away from me if I don't hork it down. It's like, that's the time for you to eat. And I think sometimes if you feel like, wow, dinner was five, 15 minutes or, or really, really quick, you will say to yourself, at least I did, well, I didn't really eat. Yeah. You know, I just, that was a snack. That was a snack. And, and I can be like, you know, I can, you know, budget more room for more food that I didn't plan on eating because I've told myself, well, that was so quick, I didn't get to enjoy it. Right, right. So sit That's down good. and actually enjoy your food, whatever it is that you're eating. That's really good. Uh, next one is from Fieber. Hey, Fieber. They say, you ask for suggestions on recipes. I suggest to just keep doing what you're already doing with easy to make recipes. There are several that I use often. I just looked at your webpage and see that there are many more for me to try. I was going to suggest desserts, but I see that you have a lot of desserts on your webpage. Besides that, I would love to try the brownie recipe from last week. Sounds fantastic. I know it's deadly for me to have a full pan of a dessert here though. I could easily eat half of it in one day. I need to make desserts where I can only make one or two servings at a time and that is not practical. That's a, that's a good um, thing to say. Yeah. I mean, we probably need to do some more single serve options. Yeah. And that is, that is something because, I mean, people do ask us, they're like, how come you guys don't do desserts? I'm like, because number <laughs> one, we don't eat a lot of desserts yeah. because we have a hard time with desserts. So when we do have that occasional dessert for us, a lot of times we kind of fall back to eating like you know, a keto chow milkshake or a keto chow mug cake or something like that, because we feel like at least we're getting a little bit of nutrition in it. Right. Or we fall back to one of the packaged foods that are out there that we feel have decent ingredients, maybe something like the perfect keto cookies or even high key cookies or something like that. And we're able to have just, a, if it's pre-packaged, we don't usually have an issue with it unless it's like, those silly Oreo things from Catalina Crunch, right? Where it comes in a sleeve and it's and not like, well, individually packed. If I don't eat this, it's gonna go stale. So yeah, we, we like to focus more on, if we're gonna do dessert recipes, a dessert recipe that won't send you off the rails, but also where you don't have to make a giant thing. We do have a few things like our cheesecake and stuff like that, which is great for a party, but we much prefer to stick to things like a mug cake or something like that where you could make this but you don't have anything that you may possibly like trigger you and Eat start a eating a whole of pan it. of it in a day right so so thank you for letting us know about that yeah uh next one is from joanne hey joanne said i would love to see less than four ingredient dishes also air fryer instant pot recipes i love the air fryer so does Caleb, so does Anthony. It's it's just so versatile. Mm -hmm. There's so much stuff. And I, and I think like, I mean, I even yesterday had some shrimp mm -hmm. just like, you know, right out of the bag. And instead of even putting them in a pan, I put them straight into the, the Instant Pot with some seasoning on them. 
and they were delicious. It's just, yeah, I'm on board with, with air fryer recipes and also Instant Pot because I love Instant Pot recipes because you can take a very cheap cut of meat right. that would normally be tough and really turn it into something that's, you know, first of all, it's usually, you know, set it and forget it. Right. And then also, you know, you save money and can make a big pot of it. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Shirley. Hey, Shirley. She says, thanks for the reminders about carbs. Also, great rose analogy, Rachel. Then Joe comes in and takes it to the next level. You two work so well together. Thanks for all the help you give to us. Well, thank you very thanks, Shirley. much. Shirley. Yeah, I, we're, we're definitely an opposites attract sort of thing. Yep. I, I'm the balloon and you're a string. Yeah. And I mean, we'd, I'd be in trouble if I didn't have Joe. It was and funny. It would be boring if you didn't have me. When we were filming here on the couch last week, as soon as she said the rose thing, I'm like, oh, I know what I'm gonna do. Aw. Because people do ask us, when we were out in uh, Utah, people had asked us like, how much of what you do is scripted? Uh, pretty much none. <laughs> the only thing that is scripted, like keto on the couch, the only thing that is scripted is, is I pull comments. Rachel doesn't even know what comments we're gonna read. When we read them, them right now, this is the first she's seeing them. And we never plan like, hey, what is the theme? It's what comments come up is what show up in keto on the couch. And it usually does take a theme. And then when we have our videos, like, you know, our like five things or informational videos. That we've planned a little bit more. The only planning usually though is the these are the things. five things. Yeah. But as far as what we say or banter back and forth, none of it is scripted. It's all off the cuff, which a lot of times gets me in trouble because my off the cuff is usually Can't not go very good. Way far. Yeah. So thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, next comment is from Mary. Hey, Mary. Mary said, diabetic educators teach diabetics about total carbs. Net carbs was made up by food manufacturers to get people to buy their products. I get so frustrated when recipes on the internet and prepackaged foods only list net carbs. This type of information is dangerous, especially for a type one diabetic like my 82 year old father who has been diabetic since his early twenties. I totally agree with you, Mary. Yes, we say it all the time and, and the bottom line is net carbs is made up. It's right. not real. If it goes in your body, you should be at least thinking about the fact that you put in your body. Now, are there certain foods that your body doesn't digest or it's actually digested, it can be good for you? Yes, one of them being like acacia gum. Does that mean you should just never think about eating it? No. That's why we always talk about like, if you wanna do net carbs because you want to have a couple of little treats or something like that, have at it, but put a total carb cap on it. Why? So that you don't overdo it. Well, it's like you're, you're 20 years too late to practice total carbs. If you wanted to do it back when people were doing Atkins or you wanted to do it when keto first, you know, kind of got started before all of these products came on the line geared toward keto, you probably- You're talking about net carbs. Yeah, I, if you wanted to do net carbs back then, you probably would be pretty safe. Right. Not anymore. Right. There is too many products on, on the market that is using that math equation against you. Right. So if you want to do it with, you know, regular, you know, whole foods, whole foods, like veg, actual vegetables and actual meat, that's one thing. Now mm -hmm. you're going back to where it was when it started. But now if you've got a prepackaged food, it's your best bet to do total carbs and just forget about, you know, you know, leaning on that net carb protocol. Yeah, you know, I, I just think it's it's the best way to look at it. The only thing that's going to happen if you do that and you say like, okay, well, I'm going to eat 30 total carbs and, you know, 20 net carbs and 30 total carbs. And if at the end of the day, you ate some foods where you counted the carbs, but your body didn't really digest it. It just benefits Like you. maybe the fiber in asparagus or something like yeah. that, right? What's the harm? None. So you ate less carbs. The bottom line is, is the carbs, when you look at your macros, that's not like you have to hit that. That's not a goal. It's a limit. The less carbs you eat, the better. That's what we love about the one-to-one -one ratio. When you look at one-to-one, -one, 
you eat, for example, 150 grams of protein and then 150 grams of energy and the energy is the fat and the carbs. So maybe one day you eat 140 grams of fat and only 10 carbs. And then on another day you eat 110 grams of fat and 40 total carbs, yeah. not net carbs, total carbs. Right. So it works back and forth. Why? It's energy. So the less carbs you eat, the better. So you're not gonna hurt yourself by putting that limit. Stop letting the food companies dictate what you buy. Because again, yeah, like the Atkins companies, those are the people who invented net carbs. Why? They want you to buy Sell their the stuff, right? Uh, next one is from Joseph. Hey Joseph, he says, Dr. Barry also said that eggs are unlimited. Actually, I think he said that you should limit to no more than five dozen a day, <laughs> though they do have 0.6 or so carbs, so they do need to be counted either way. But yeah, limiting ourselves on all the triggering style foods, looking at you whipped cream, mm -hmm. is so important to our long-term success in overcoming food addiction. Yeah, I mean, and now we were joking, but any, any kind of whole food, like Dr. Barry will tell you, like there's six things. Like you can eat your eat bacon and pork and you can have your seafood and your beef and your eggs. Eat all of that as you want. Why? You're not going to be able to overeat it. Like I would love to see somebody sit down and eat six dozen eggs in a sitting. Right. You're just not gonna be able to do it. That your body is not going to allow you to eat that much protein. But when it comes to things like whipped cream or that kind of Carbs. stuff, it's easy to overlook how much you're eating. I mean, the bottom line, has anybody actually looked at how many servings are in a can of ready whipped whipped cream? Even the sugar-free one where it says zero carbs. Look at how many servings are in that can. And oh, by the way, look at what the serving size is. I challenge anybody to actually only get one tablespoon when they press that button. No. Well, I mean, the first aside from the fact that we all I was just gonna do say this. we have to check it first. So right. that's where you gotta make sure it's actually like creamy, right? Yeah, I've gotta fill my entire mouth and I have a giant mouth full right. of the first. So you can fit like ten servings easily, right in your mouth. Easily. So, uh, next one is from Jessica. Hey Jessica, she says, two crazy ketos for electrolyte comparison video, can you add keto beam? A lot in the keto space recommend them because they're liquid with no taste. Okay, so yes, we are working on, I'm hoping to have that video in the next week or so, an electrolyte video, and I'm leaving this up because I wanted to remember the name, but I can turn it off now. Um, I'm not going to include that keto beam in there. I did look it up. If you are using Keto Beam, this is gonna get me in trouble. Please stop. Yeah. I looked it up. It's a joke. It reminds me of the, um, remember those, like in the 20s and 30s and you had like those traveling things that would go around. Oh, like the snake the water. The snake oil, right? Yeah. That's, and, and where they were basically selling you alcohol. A tonic. It, or the tonic. It was alcohol, right? It, it's, it's, it's water. It's water. The funny part is when you look at it, it says like 14 grams of, or 14 milligrams of electrolytes. Like, really? Like, it's water. Just drink like, they're water. selling you water. So, please, and it's ridiculously expensive. Like, they're not even telling you how much potassium am I getting? How much sodium am I getting? It's water. So, because at first, when I, when I read her post, I'm like, well, how can it be tasteless? Minerals have a taste. Right. They should have a taste. They're minerals. Like sodium is a mineral. It's salty. You should taste it. If you're drinking an electrolyte and it has no zero taste. taste, not no added flavoring, like keto chow electrolyte drops, they have a taste. It's salt. They're salty. Yeah. But when you look at the thing, it says no added flavoring. Like, you know, Relight has an unflavored one. And it tastes like salt. It tastes like salt. If it tastes like water, it's, it's water, water, right? There's no real beneficial minerals in there. When you need a lot of electrolytes, a lot of sodium, and a lot of potassium, and a lot of magnesium. When we looked it up, the first thing that came to my mind is when you realize that avion spelled backwards is naive. Yes. And I, and I thought, wow, this is another one of those yeah. situations where it's like, wow, you're capitalizing on the push for electrolytes yeah. by just giving you water. Yeah, so just please like, 
It's I looking at the ingredients, it's a joke and it's a ridiculous amount of money. And it's not cheap, yeah. Yeah. So uh next one is from Amy. Hey Amy, she says, Does anyone have the brownie recipe Joe and Rachel did the video on using keto chow written down? I'd love to be lazy and not rewatch the video to write the recipe down. Okay, so Amy, any video, and this is really for anybody, anytime we do a recipe video. There is a link to that recipe on our website. So if you go to our website up on the top, it does say recipes and you can click on that and then we have it broken down into like appetizers. Some, some things obviously fall into multiple categories. So you'll have like appetizers, desserts, condiments, like main entrees. Any, any video that we do going over a recipe, it will be on there. Now there are some recipes on there that we have not done a video, but if there's a video on it, you'll always find the recipe written down on our website. Now the brownies could go in both entree and into desserts, right? <laughs> well, there's, for example, the one with the keto chow, it's actually listed in desserts and it's also listed under keto chow because yeah. we have a lot of keto chow recipes. Let's go this, let's take a quick commercial break and then we'll come back with the rest of the Facebook comments. You look cute today. Thank you. I like it. I like your glasses, I like your smile. Oh, like so, oh this one's actually too This many. one's to you. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, uh, next comment's from Anita. Hey, Anita. Anita said, hello, I'm new here and I'm trying to learn more about keto and what to do, not to do. Are there any recommendations for a newbie? I haven't actually started because I don't know where to start. It all seems complicated. Oh, it's not complicated. Okay, so Anita, we actually have an entire series, which I'm gonna link right up here on how to get started on keto. We actually have an original series, which we've kind of changed the way we do it. This is gonna be super simple. This is not complicated at all. If you have not started, here's what I want you to do. I want you to, on week one, just stop eating sugar and bread. Yep. That's it. Anything with sugar in it and bread products, things like that. Just, that's what I want you to do, week one. Don't worry about calories. Don't worry about anything. So week one, just ditch the carbohydrates. As much of whatever you want, just ditch your carbs. And then after that, we can start looking at you know, a couple more things of like, you know, having this, maybe now starting to look at, okay, I'm gonna figure out what my macros are. By week three, you're gonna start eating one to one. This is the easiest way you're ever gonna be able to do it. I want you to look at what is your ultimate dream goal weight? Not if, not if I, you know, weigh 250 pounds and I'd like to get to 200 pounds. What is the goal weight? This is the, I think the best, we gotta figure out a term for that. What is the goal weight? Right that when your doctor says, the book says you should weigh this and you look at, that is the stupidest number I've ever seen, right? Yeah. Like I think the book says I should weigh 160 pounds. I can't even imagine myself at 160 pounds. But 160 grams of protein is a challenge right. to get in. Right. And so that's what you're aiming for. What we're looking for is what is that number? What is that ultimate goal weight? Whether or not you think you're ever going to achieve it. So for example, let's do, I like using 150. It's a good round number, right. whether you're a woman or not, you know? So you could say I want to what you want to weigh 150 pounds. You're going to eat 150 grams of protein a day. So whatever that number is, you need that much grams of protein. Then you're gonna eat up to 150 grams of fat and carbohydrates combined, keeping the carbs as low as possible, preferably under about 30 total per day. Now you don't have to eat all of those carbs and you don't have to eat all of that fat but you want to try to eat all of the protein. The protein is the most important. We're not gonna worry about calories or anything like that. And if you do that, your body will allow you to just start losing weight and it's going to find that homeostasis and you're going to get there. Could it possibly be slow? Yes, but it's gonna be the healthiest way and you're gonna feel good. And the best part is, you're not gonna feel like you're depriving yourself of a bunch of food and volume. Exactly, now the only thing that I would add to that is get yourself a good electrolyte supplement. Yes. Because as you're changing over the way that you eat, your body's a little bit like, wait, what's happening here? And yeah. so you wanna make sure that you're getting your magnesium and your potassium and your sodium in every yep. day. Yep, uh, next one is from Victoria. Hey Victoria, 
Ray, she says, okay, I have just gotten turned on to electrolyte supplements. I got a sample pack of LMNT yesterday, and last night I ordered all the different flavors of Relight electrolyte mix from the Redmond to try. Thank you, 2KK, for the discount code. Mm -hmm. I adore sweet, salty flavors, and I fear I may get addicted to these. Is it possible to get sick or have a negative reaction if I drink too many of these per day? Would three to four servings a day be overkill, or would it just be expensive urine and not necessarily harmful? Okay, so it's you're not going to overdo your electrolytes. It's it's I don't want to say it's impossible, but it's almost impossible. Yeah. And again, we're not doctors or nurses or health professionals, and everything we talk about is based on our own research and our own examination and what we've done testing on our body. But let's say, and I would say that's about what I drink on a daily basis. I generally drink a Zip Fizz and then at least three servings of Relight a day. Same here. So if you look at if you look at three to four servings of Relight, that would be three to four thousand milligrams of sodium per day, and that would be two thousand or fifteen hundred to two thousand milligrams of potassium a day. That's only about fifty percent of the amount of potassium that you need on a daily basis. You're at the upper limit of the salt or the upper level of what you need. They say about forty five hundred milligrams. But again, your body's not going to let you overdo it. The worst is maybe you'll have a little bit of bloat from too much extra sodium, and then the second you cut it out one day or limit it one day. Your, water's, your body's just gonna flush out that extra sodium. But what happens is, is when you start drinking, eating or drinking too much salt, your body starts going, ew, I've had enough. Right, right? and it doesn't taste the, as good as it did the, you know, the last one you do. And I always just like, I, you know, this is usually what, I, I'll put a scoop of Relight in this. So I'm, I'm drinking a lot of liquid with it, even more than they suggest. Right. And what I'll usually do is still during the day, drink one of just water. Mm -hmm. And that helps me also not to like retain so much. Yeah, like right now, I mean, I have this filled up with water. I think this is 32 ounces. I don't even know. Yeah. And I have the strawberry lemonade I really like this is the newest flavor and I put one scoop in here and I'll drink it and then sometimes I'll drink a plain one but I like flavoring so I would rather even if I'm drinking a little water down but at the end of the day I generally have three to four scoops your body's just not going to let you overdo it all of a sudden it's going to get too salty and your body's gonna be like yep I've had enough and right. again if you look at that book the salt fix again I'll leave a link down below and he talks about that when left to your own devices, studies have shown that everybody settles in between 3,500 and 45 milligrams of sodium, which again is how much we need. So it's kind of funny if, if you just don't measure it at all, that's where you end up at, right? And again, we forget how much people are so worried about salt, but we don't realize how much salt was in the foods we were eating before. I recently saw a thing that there's actually like more sodium in like drinking a McDonald's milkshakes than a lot of the burgers and stuff that you're getting from it, them. Which is surprising, right? right? You're thinking a milkshake, what does it have salt in it for? Yeah, like so I would not worry about it at all. Uh, next one is from Sarah. Hey Sarah, she says, who has tried the Redmond pre-workout? Thoughts? I would love to try the flavors first, but $10 for samples when the tub is 50 seems like a waste. What flavor is your favorite? I love the salty water, watermelon lime is my favorite. So for the pre-workout, they have two flavors right now. Um, they have a peach mango, which I'm just never really a giant peach fan. I'm just not a peach fan. fan. And uh, I forget what the other flavor is. It's like a blueberry. Oh, it's the blueberry lemonade. Thank you very much. I do like that one. Me too. The one thing I'm going to tell you is if, if you're just looking for flavors and you don't really need a pre-workout, I would not suggest no. using that. If you're not working out and taking that right before a workout, you feel like you're gonna get like tingles in your skin because of uh, what's in it. So it really is meant to be a pre-workout. It's not really meant to be an electrolyte drink so much. So it's just something to be aware of. They do have lots of flavors. So if you're looking for just flavors, you know, so maybe you don't have the peach mango, but I will highly suggest the mango flavor in itself. That is really, really good. The new strawberry lemonade. Watermelon lime is probably my favorite. I still like lemon lime. And you still love lemon lime. For me, mixed berry is my least favorite of them all. Yeah. 
I actually unflavored is my least favorite. Yeah, because I want a little flavor. But yeah, I pretty much like all the flavors. Watermelon lime is definitely number one. Mango and then lemonade are kind of like tied for two. And I also really like the pina colada one. Oh yeah, pina colada is good. So, uh, next one is from Emery. Hey Emery. Emery said, hi, quick question. I had a heart attack in February and have poor circulation and diabetes. Is it safe to go on a keto diet? I am so sorry that you had a heart attack. Yeah, we're very sorry about that. As far as your question, uh, yes. Uh, now, again, we're not doctors or health professionals or nurses or anything like that. And anything that we talk about is based on our own personal experience and what we have learned from watching actual health professionals or you know practicing on ourselves. Uh, but yeah, keto is going to help you with reducing your risk of heart attacks. Why? You're not eating carbohydrates. I would not worry about cholesterol, just my personal opinion. Uh, but you can also check out some work from about the cholesterol code from Dave Feldman. Uh, there are lots of informative videos out there about how keto can help reduce your chance of heart attack. And then when it comes to diabetes, Rachel's mom was a type two diabetic for 20 over years. 20 years and is no longer classified as a diabetic. And if you join our Facebook family group, you will find lots of people who are no longer taking any of their medications. They have re uh, reversed their diabetes. So yes, keto is going to help with all of that stuff. But again, we are not doctors or health professionals. And I would suggest either talking to your doctor or finding a doctor who does understand having a low carb lifestyle. Uh, next one is from Becca. Hey, Becca. She says, I'm in despair. I've been st stalled since April, stalled or ever so slightly gaining. I really want to lose about eight pounds. I'm in a no weighing competition for the month of August, so I don't know where I am exactly, but my jeans are uncomfortable to wear. I've been told I don't eat enough, that I should eat more, and I admit I don't tend to eat a lot. I've been trying to force myself to eat more, but then the carbs start adding up and it's hard to keep under 20 total carbs. I've been having one keto child drink a day, but that gets really carby. Today, I had three ounces of blackberries with whipped cream. I'm going to be substituting Fahe plain yogurt for that now, one keto child shake and a five ounce piece of steak with two pieces of string cheese, and I'm still five grams total carbs over. Any suggestions of what else I can change? Now she did put up, here's her macros right now. And it's 79, what, a total of 100 grams of protein, 82 grams of fat for 1,218 calories with 20 grams of total carbs. So here's what I'm gonna tell you. Number one, you are not eating enough, which right. you said people are telling you. Uh, a few things that I'm going to suggest. Number one, make sure you're drinking enough electrolytes. If you're not consuming enough electrolytes, your body will start retaining water. It will retain fat. It's it, you're need, if you're not having, I know it sounds weird. It does sound but weird. But if you're not having electrolytes, you're going to have some issues with losing weight. So make sure that's number one, getting all of your electrolytes in. You wanna have about 3,500 to 4,500 milligrams of sodium a day, 3,500 to 4,500 milligrams of potassium a day, and about 300 milligrams of magnesium. With that being said, you're saying that you're having a hard time eating more without having your total carbs go up. Really look at the one-to-one, -one, okay? There's no magic in 20 total carbs. You could make it 30 total carbs. If you're doing one-to-one -one where you're keeping your energy, which is your carbs and your fat, at or lower than your protein, you're gonna be fine. So maybe one day you have 110 grams of fat and you have 20 grams of carbs. And then another day, like we said before, you only have 90 grams of fat, but you have 30 grams of carbs. Right. I mean, it, it, it's so long as it works out that way, you're keeping that number at or lower than what your protein is. But you're not eating enough food. You need to up your protein. And, and it sounds weird, but if you under eat, once again, your body's gonna slow down the metabolism and it's gonna start holding onto everything you eat. Well, and it makes sense because it's like, well, we're not getting enough. Right. So I better save every single thing I have. So later, if she tries to give me less, right. I'll still have something in reserve and we don't wanna hold on to reserves. Yeah, I mean, our body is really amazing. It knows what to do when you don't give it any food at all. 
Yeah. It knows what to do when you give it too much food. But when you tease it. But when you tease it, it starts going, I don't, when's my next meal going to come? Like, yeah, listen, sure. I need 2,000 calories of energy a day to sustain myself, but she's only giving me 1,200. And so for a little while, you'll lose weight. And then after a while, you'll be, your body's going to be like, this isn't working. Right. So let me start slowing things down where I don't need to use as much energy. So the other thing I'm going to say is I don't understand where I, if you're trying to eat more food, your total carbs is going up unless you're not eating the proper foods. Yeah. Try to stick to whole foods. If it, and I'm not going to, if your whole, if your carbs are coming from eating like lettuce and asparagus and broccoli, that's not going to affect you. You're not going to overeat lettuce. I promise you. Lettuce is not why we're all fat. No. Okay. We're all fat because we were eating an entire bag of Lay's potato chips or an entire bag of brownies. Or a loaf of bread. Or a loaf of bread in a sitting, which I have done. I've done it. So, you know, it make sure that if you're trying to just eat more food, more like protein, eat more chicken, eat more steak, eat more bacon, eat more eggs. The, you're not going to have to worry about any carbs from that kind of stuff. Also, this is going to be very unpopular. You don't need fruit. I'm going to tell you, you shouldn't eat fruit on keto. Fruit, you can say what you want. Is it low carb? Yeah, not low enough. We don't need fruit. And I'm going to point you to a very good video explaining why you don't need fruit from somebody who knows a lot more about this than me, and that is Dr. Robert Sywis. I'm going to put the video up here, and he's going to tell you why you need to stop eating fruit. Maybe once a year, have a few blackberries or a few raspberries or a couple of strawberries. But not an everyday thing. But it shouldn't be a regular basis. You don't need it. It's sugar. Bottom line, it's sugar. Uh, next one is from Liz. Hey Liz, she says, non-scale victory, pre-registering for a routine procedure. Person on the phone said, you're healthy, so not at goal weight yet, but yay. That is encouraging. Right, yeah, whenever you hear somebody go, you're healthy. Really? I don't think I've ever heard that before. Wow, this is a great call. Can you call back again? Because right? I'd like to just have this entire experience again. Uh, next one is from Francine. Hey, Francine. Francine said, I wanted to go out tonight, but the avocado I bought last week will finally be ripe enough to eat between 9 p.m. and 9.15 p.m. So I can't. I am so on board with that. We have had that struggle so many times that we even started getting like from Costco, the smashed avocado where it's not even guacamole. It's just avocado in little single serve portions because... I could actually eat it right away and, you know, separate it the, you know, when I wanted to eat it because right. yes, like waiting for that avocado and like missing your shot right. to enjoy it. Like it just happened too many times. Fortunately for me, I've never been a huge avocado. Oh, fan. I love them. I, I just, I, I was, for me, it was a consistency issue and even guacamole was the same thing. It was consistency, guacamole. but I've learned to like guacamole. That's actually a food that I never ate pre-keto that I eat now on certain circumstances. Like, you know, if you go to Chipotle or something like that, or I love it. like I'll make it. But, you know, let us know down in the comments section, what is a food that you did not eat pre-keto, but love now that you're on keto? For me, it's guacamole. It's but funny. Rachel loves guacamole. I love it. And I used to try to make it for her, and I just got to the point now where it's like, it's not worth it trying to find the perfect avocado. And then when you do make it, it goes bad. So quickly. So the uh, for us, it's become the best thing to do when it comes to guacamole and avocados buy is buy either frozen avocados. You can buy bags of just frozen avocado and this way you can take out just a serving. Or if you want guacamole, buy the, not just guacamole, but buy the individual serving. Right. Because some, until once you open it, it's garbage. Yeah. But if you keep them sealed up and you have all the individual, it's worth the extra money. In the long term, I promise you're saving money doing it that way. Well, it frustrates me so bad, like throwing out stuff. Yeah. That just ticks me off really, really badly. So, yeah. So, we have one more. It's from Oval. Hey, Oval. Oval said, while on vacation, I was told many times, a little bit won't hurt you. I finally used the line I heard you say. You will would you would never tell an alcoholic or a drug addict who's trying to kick their addiction a little bit won't hurt you. Well, I am a sugar carb addict and yes, a little bit will hurt me cuz I usually can't just have a little bit. 
That helped a lot. I'm so glad, Oval. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, and I know that, you know, for the most part, it's well-meaning people. Mm -hmm. Like, they, they, they want you to enjoy your day. Right. And I think that sometimes we just have to say to them, do you know, I want you to know that I'm just enjoying being with you. Yeah. That being with you and sharing this fellowship that we're sharing and getting together as a family or a friend group that is really the treat. Mm -hmm. The treat isn't the food on on the picnic table. It is the conversation and it's the relationship building that we are experiencing. And we, if there was no food at all, good or bad, I would still love spending this afternoon like with that. you. I yeah, really I mean, like it's that. it's important that people know their value because as, you know, and it's it really you're you're giving the day off to moms and aunts and grandmas who think sometimes and wrongly and i've i've been there before where it's like i am not making memories with these children unless i am sugaring them up or right. if i'm not coming up with some sort of banana pudding or this is my cake and this is how i'm known to my family is by this food that i'm serving to them right and the reality is you are more than that number on the scale and you are more than your best recipe you have so much more to offer the people in your life and just getting to be in your presence and hang out with you that's the treat yeah that's the real treat well that is going to be this week's keto on the couch we appreciate everybody for joining us now don't forget this week's live stream make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hitting that bell button we don't know when because it's going to be we don't not know when it's going to be we may have to do it a little bit later or a little bit earlier um it's it's just going to kind of have to be like what do we get once we get into omaha and seeing how the event and everything goes if you joined us during the premiere today we really appreciate it uh, don't forget every monday we premiere keto on the couch at the 10 a.m eastern time and our normal live streams are on thursdays at 8 30 p.m eastern time now if you like seeing videos like this check out some of the other videos that we have linked right down there also make sure you take a look at our most recent video which i'm going to put right over here but whether you head this way or you head this way don't forget to head this way subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video you'll be alerted to it until next week bye, bye.